Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the, the Books. Books. Your online librarians. And we're here with another Weekly Reads. It's Weekly <laughs> Reads 11. First, we have Bookish News. Audiobook Sync, a service of Audiophile Magazine, returns April 27th. And this year, they have announced that they have 16 weeks and 32 audiobooks for you to enjoy. So if you're interested, what this is, is you download Overdrive and every week they have two audiobooks available for that week only for you to download. They are paired and curated as a pair that goes together, whether it's a classic and a, a current book or a nonfiction and a fiction book. It's not the same every year. So you can text SYNCYA, S-Y-N-C-Y-A, to 25827. And you can also sign up on their website with putting in your email address and they send you a reminder every week. And we'll put some information on that down in the links below. It's a great service and they have some great books. Another book news, Mark Twain, his lost fairy tale has reappeared and will be coming out out pretty soon in print. So be looking for that. They haven't even quite announced the name of it yet. We're gonna start today with younger books and move to older books. Mighty Maui Makes a Friend by Kalikaluha Hurley and Mirdad Izvandi. I could be totally slaughtering those names, so I apologize. This is from the show Moana. You may recognize him. But there's one thing Maui has not done, and that's learn how to be a good friend. So when he meets Moana, Moana teaches him the importance of being a good friend and what traits make a good friend. I like this text because it has has parts where you're supposed to emphasize, as you can see by the bigger text, and it goes well with the pictures. This is a great way to help younger children to learn the early literacy skill of narrative. It makes a fun read aloud as well to emphasize certain parts of the story. This is a review book from Disney Press, and it's for grades pre-K all the way up to about third grade, or ages three to about eight or nine. I think this is a great book because it can be used in the classroom and help children to understand the traits of being a good friend. And it is the world of reading, Marvel superhero adventures tricky trouble this has a lexel of 30 l view book from marvel so thank you marvel this comes out january 2017 so it may or may not be out yet pre-level one readers teach easy vocabulary word repetition and short simple sentences there's not a lot of words on the page a lot of the story is going to be told through the pictures it is a hero day at school and this school is not attended just by little children but by heroes and your mighty Avengers. Well, you can see that they are students here and that there are things going on in the pictures. The kids are going to have to not only read the words but study the pictures because with this few words, obviously the entire story has to be pretty simple, but the pictures are going to help them more than even the words will. So this is just a really fun one for kids who are learning to read and are reading at a very beginning level. Lots of sight words. Kids will like this one if they like the Avengers. The Capybara Conspiracy by Erica Pearl. And this book, Farley Middle School's principal is obsessed with sports. In fact, if you're not a sports team, you have to hold your academic school club down in what they call, the kids call the dungeon, which is basically this dark, dingy, forgotten hallway in the basement of the school. All of Henry is determined to get herself and the other academic clubs noticed. When she wins this awesome essay contest where she gets a free trip to Florida, she tries to get it on the school announcements. But instead of not only getting hardly any exposure, like one short brief mention, the principal even gets her name wrong. He calls her Henry. She meets this kid, Reynaldo, who's brand new at the school and convinces him to help her to get themselves noticed by the principal, which frankly, that's just a bad idea to begin with. With. You don't want the attention of the principal, come on. The school mascot, the capybara, but it only just goes downhill from there. This book is told similar to a play format because Elv is also obsessed with the drama club, but it's very well developed. It has even a bit of action, but the characters, you just fall in love with them. If you like realistic fiction with a little bit of adventure, you'll like this book. This is a review book from Knopf press and this would be great for about grades four to six but if you have a good reader a third grader could probably read it as well so ages eight to twelve this is a great book for those who liked death by toilet paper by donna get part or the fourth stall so i have one more world of reading book for you today and it has stickers, stickers! 
There's two pages of stickers in the back. So this is one of the last scenes in The Force Awakens. It's going to drop you right in the story where the first order planet, the Starbase, is about to explode. You'll notice that the pictures are illustrated scenes from the movies. So they'll look familiar, but they're not gonna have real people in them. There are a few more words on a page because this is a level two reader, kindergarten through second grade, so ages five through eight, depending on reading level. Simple storylines, compound sentences, and contractions are gonna make their way into here. If they like the movie, they're going to like these books. And obviously this is not the first one. This comes out in January, 2017. Yes. So this is a review copy from Disney and Lucasfilms Press. Rick Riordan's Demigods and Magicians. This is Percy and Annabeth meet the Canes. So you'll find the Egyptian mythology meeting the Greek mythology as well. So plenty of monsters, plenty of mayhem, and plenty of gods popping up at very inconvenient times. They're told in short stories, and I just love how the author captures and really blends the two together. It's very flawless and just masterfully done. Very action-packed adventure for such short stories, and the characters, as always, are just unique and fun to read about. If you've loved the other books by Rick Ryan, and whether that you've only liked Percy Jackson or you liked the, only the Canes or you liked them both, you'll still like this book no matter what. This is a review book from Disney Hyperion and so this will be for grades 5 to 9 or even as low as 4th grade or ages 8 to about 15. Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes, also by Rick Riordan. And it does have illustrations that are so fun. These are all illustrated by John Rocco. I just love the detail on these pictures and how much it brings to life the different creatures and monsters that are the typical Greek heroes from the past encountered. And you may have read this in hardback, but in paperback, it takes on a whole new light and even some more detail in different parts of the book that I won't mention without spoiling it. If you like Greek heroes and you love the snarky attitude of Percy Jackson towards these stories, you'll like Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes by Rick Riordan. This one is also grades five to nine or ages eight to 15. And it's a review book from Disney Hyperion. And this one comes out in February 2017, so it's not out yet. But if you want to see the hard copy, we reviewed it in the store storybook book haul. This is The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Meets World. And this is a review book from Marvel. It is written by Shannon Hale and Dean Hale. Those are New York Times bestselling authors. You will remember them from other books they've written and that you have loved. Shannon and Dean Hale are local authors, so we had to read this book, of course. Well, it was a review book, so that's another reason we had to read it. But if we didn't have to read it, we still would have picked it up just because of who wrote it. This one is an interesting one. You have Doreen Green. She is a girl with a tail and superhero squirrel-like powers. Yep, I said squirrel. Squirrels can jump high, she can jump high. Squirrels have powerful teeth, she has powerful teeth. You get the idea, she's got a big fluffy bushy tail and she likes to wear stretch pants. Why? Well, it's a lot easier to hide your tail. So they are moving and she has no friends, not human, not squirrel. And she's worried about being able to fit in like every junior high school student. And the squirrels here don't seem to really like her and the kids here don't seem to really like her. But of course, somebody starts to be nice and she begins to make friends in both worlds. She has to earn their friendship. So she makes friends with both a girl who is deaf and they sign together and, and a little squirrel named Tippy Toe. Tippy Toe, she is the head of the squirrels. She gets trapped in this mean, bad cage that tries to squish the squirrels to death. So Squirrel Girl has to save the day. Now her parents' rule is that she can't show her tail. And without her tail, she can't access her superpowers. Not least, not when it's tucked into her pants. She decides on several occasions in this book to let her tail out so that she can help save the day. On the cages trying to squish the squirrels, there is M.M. engraved. Who is M.M.? And why is he trying to kill the squirrels? And why are the dogs all of a sudden getting all mean and up in the squirrels business and trying to kill the squirrels as well? It's really hard to run a squirrel world when these dogs are all trying to mess up your meeting. There's little cages trying to squish you to death in the trees. This M.M. person is a lot worse than she ever imagined and she needs the Avengers to help. Why won't they listen to her? Maybe, just maybe Doreen or Squirrel Girl can get the Avengers to listen somehow. 
So this book is told in a variety of perspectives and the perspectives are labeled at the beginning of each chapter. You have chapters with Doreen, which is Doreen in human form, chapters with Squirrel Girl, which is Doreen in squirrel form, chapters from Tippy Toe, and chapters from her human friend, Anna Sophia, chapters in text message, and, and anyways, there might just be some chapters in the perspective of the bad guys. Ooh. And I'm not telling you who M.M. is. This is a review copy from Marvel. It comes out in February, 2017. It's grades four through eight or ages eight or nine through about 14. There's not really any language or other content. You have superhero violence and squirrels jumping around buildings and all that. And parents who are a little concerned even though they know that their daughter was born to be a superhero. It's just a fun read. It's got lots of girl power and lots of squirrel power. The long anticipated, at least for me, <laughs> review for Randoms and Rebels by David Liss. So first off, Randoms is the first one. In this book, there Earth has been selected to be considered for the Confederation Council. And that's basically every single planet that has life forms on it, with the exception of one, which we'll get to in a sec. How did they get to be a part of this council is they have to acquire so many points of experience in order to level up enough to be considered limited members of the Confederation Council. In this whole process, something happens. One of the teams never makes it on to the spaceship where they're trying to acquire these points because this evil society known as the fans had destroys the sh shuttle before it can get to the spaceship. It's a lot of things come up that make the main character, Zeke Reynolds, start to question what's really going on. Before this all happened, his mom was diagnosed with ALS and his father disappeared years before and all these things from his past come into play in this story. It's a very action-packed science fiction adventure. His geekiness of everything sci-fi that he knows comes into play. And if you're a major sci-fi geek, you'll absolutely love this series. And even if you're not, you'll probably like it too. This is very reminiscent of Star Wars, Guardians of the Galaxy, Aliens on Vacation, Bongo Fishing. I like this because the characters just grow on you. You fall in love with them. And there's a lot of mystery going on. It's a very complex story. So this will be for grades five through nine or ages 10 and up. If you have a fourth grader who can read more complex plot, you could go as low as eight or nine. Rebels by David Liss is the sequel. Without completely spoiling it, somehow he winds up back on Earth and with an amazing AI in his brain. He gets a text message from his mom warning him that there's danger. So he runs out of his new life in Boulder, Colorado, only to find himself back in space helping the aliens again to defeat the fans. Once again, very fun science fiction adventure, but you'll have to read the first one to be able to read the second one. These are both review books from Simon & Schuster and kissthebook.blogspot.com, so thank you for sending us these books. We're gonna take a second to remind you to check for that subscribe button because a lot of people have said that they've been missing their notifications, their subscribes. So please make sure you're subscribed. Just double check to make sure you're getting notifications and that they are turned on as well. We should also just clarify once again about review copies. We receive a lot of re free review copies from publishers. You notice we do mention who they're from. They in no way provide any other compensation besides the copy. All we have to do is read it and tell our opinion about it, which is an awesome thing for librarians since we love to give our opinions about books. <laughs> the Last Descendants and Assassin's Creed series. These are really fun books. So this one is through Scholastic and Ubisoft. I literally knew nothing about Assassin's Creed. I do not know what it was and this is not what I expected it to be, but this is awesome. And now I have to go see the movie because I am totally an Assassin's Creed fan. The, what this is, is these kids have DNA and threads to past ancestors who are part of either the Brotherhood of Assassins or the Templar Order or Bolt. There are these three pieces of the trident. They've been broken off and turned into blades. Each of those has a special power. Now, Owen at the beginning does not know any of this life. His father died in prison. Owen or insists that his father did not commit the burglary that he is said to have committed. They have this guy at the IT school, his name's Monroe, and he has this special cool technology that can take you into the past. Owen wants to use this technology and his connection with Monroe to take his DNA and find out if his father really did it or find something that can clear his father. So this technology is called an animus. The only thing is it works off cellular memory. 
Wolverine. Owen's DNA and history with his father only coincide until the moment of his conception. After that, he can't remember anything of his father, but he can remember everything from all of his ancestors back, back way, way, way back. Pretty much the beginning of time. So his past and Javier's past ancestors have collided in the same time point as one of these artifacts. They go back and Monroe finds that there's a little more to this and he ends up having to stop the simulation. Monroe pulls together a bunch of kids, not just Javier and Owen. They get pulled into this past that they didn't know that they even really had, that they all had these threads together. And they get pulled through their cellular memory into the 1863 draft riots in New York City by Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. You're on these violent streets, there's mayhem everywhere. Some of these children, they don't really know what they're getting drug into. All they know is that pretty much everything just is. It's not that either side is good or bad, it's just that they are. And they both believe that they're doing things for the greater good. So you're gonna find out more about the Assassin's Creed, the Brotherhood of the Assassins, the Templar Order, the Trident. And you also get some historical fiction background, 1863 draft riots, due to ages and violence grades six and up, or ages 12 and up. But because of the movie, you may even have some high school students who are interested in it as well. I'm going to review the second book. It is going to spoil the ending of this book. If you do not want to be spoiled, fast forward to Kira's next book, Charlie Higgs in the End. Book two, The Tomb of the Con by Matthew J. Kirby. This is Owen and his friends. In the last book, they made some great accomplishments, but they lost. They have been split up. Owen and Javier have been taken by the Assassin's Creed. The rest of them have been taken by the Templars. Then you have Monroe. We don't know who Monroe is, that he's like some rogue. We don't know if he's good, he's bad. But then again, we just know that everybody just is and they are doing what they believe is best for the greater good. You have your time travel aspect again. You have the friends all being taken back. They believe they have found pieces of where the second relic is in China. And the great grandson of Genghis Khan is Monjiki Khan. I could be saying that completely wrong, but his tomb has never been found and they're thinking that's where this relic might be. So you have both sides trying to go back to the same time period. They're not sure who to trust. They're not sure which side they're on. They're not sure if they're being told the truth by anybody. They just know that their DNA and their past ancestry has all ripped them from their pleasant little lives or not so pleasant little lives and tossed them into this world. Now they're in Mongolia, China, they're all fighting for this relic, but they're not all following the same timeline because the only one with the most data is Monroe. Monroe's device was the newest and greatest version when he stole it from the Templars. And so now everybody else doesn't have all the abilities. Javier is still Owen's best friend. Owen is still reeling over his father's death and he does want to prove him innocent, even if just for himself. Then you have all this conflict. Again, it's a really good book. It's another one that's impossible to put down. The action keeps you turning. What I liked about this book even a little more than the first book is the past and the present take more a back and forth kind of appeal so that like your time in the past isn't as long as it was in the first book. So you just kind of go back and forth, back and forth, and they interweave quite nicely. It's a great book. It's really going to appeal to boy readers, but it will appeal to girl readers as well. And especially if you like the writings of Heather Brewer, I think you're gonna like this one. I really liked this book and it was impossible to put down again. Kira's next book is book seven in the Enemy series by Charlie Higson, which means if you haven't read the first six books, there are bound to be some spoilers. So if you don't want that, please fast forward to my next book, Take the Key and Lock Her Up. The end. This is the thrilling conclusion to the Enemy series by Charles Higson. Rick Riordan called it Lord of the Flies meets zombies. The adults have all turned into zombies. Since the kids are the only humans in this whole world, you can guess what they eat. Kind of gross. Now the adults are, pl are not just like your typical zombies. They actually have a fair amount of intelligence and they're planning a huge terrorist type attack on London. And it's up to all the, not only the kids, that the teens that are in the London area, they have to call in reinforcements from all around the world of friends that they know. So if you like a lot of zombies, you like action packed, you'll definitely like this book. This is for those who like Jonathan Mayberry's Rotten Ruin series, anything really with zombies. It has a very much icky violence, fair amount of language. 
So this would be better for grades nine and up, ages 15 and up. This is a review book from Hyperion, so thanks for the book. Okay, Allie Carter's Take the Key and Lock Her Up, the third and concluding novel in the Embassy Row series. So if you don't want spoilers from books one and two, please fast forward to the conclusion. So you start the book with Grace Blakely on the run. In the la end of the last book, she was helicoptered out with Alexi and her brother Jamie. Jamie had been stabbed. We didn't know if he was gonna live or die. It's in the beginning of this book, he's alive, but it's still touch and go. You find out that she, we had just found out that she is the long lost princess of Adria. And her brother should rightfully be the king. Of course, there's the current royal family of Adria. And then there's the secret society. And we don't know who to trust still and who's good, who's bad who's trying to kill Grace and her brother and who's framed Alexi and all this other stuff. This book is fantastic. She's kidnapped by the order. She's taken back to Europe because they start off in America. She basically has to finish solving this riddle. The, the song that we sing about the children on the, the night where they're celebrating the royal family being killed leads to them to where there's more in there. There's something missing. She has to figure it out. And people are still trying to kill them and they cannot trust them, anybody. And we eventually find out. Wait, I can't tell you that part. <laughs> It's a fantastic book. I'm glad I read it. The conclusion to this book is just really heartwarming and loving. I think it was the perfect ending for the series. It's just what I, I really respect the characters for what their decisions are in this book. If you love any of those tough girl mysteries, you're going to like this book. Well, that's it for our weekly reads number 11. I know it's kind of a long one. We've got a lot more books to read in that January to be read pie. Are you gonna watch the Youth Media Awards? Are you gonna look for them? Go ahead and put that in the comments below. So if you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. Please hit like if you like this video or share it with your friends. Thank you and until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye.